I wanted to show you how to make a mask here. Take a bandana like this and you fold it. Make sure you fold it properly. And as I'm showing you this, remember that you don't want to take a hospital worker's mask. That's why I'm showing you this. Remember that you should wear the mask if you go in public, but only if you feel like you can't social distance. You don't need to wear this if you're just going for a walk, for example, by yourself. And also remember that you're doing this to try and prevent yourself from putting the virus into the air. Everyone has to behave like they have the virus. This isn't necessarily to protect you, it's to protect others from you. So fold the bandana. Here's a pro tip. Don't use small hair bands like this. Find big hair bands. Put one on either end, over here. Do this. And then this is gonna be a key move right here. Put it like this, but then fold one end and really tuck it inside the other. Get in there like this. This is not gonna be a fashion statement, but there you go. And there's my bandana. Does the job, keeps me from spreading the virus. You take it off, reach back here like this, pretend that the bandana's contaminated, you can put that in the laundry. If you have a mask like this, this is one that my daughter made me, you're gonna have to learn how to tie behind your head, like surgeons do, or get someone to do this for you, but preferably you do everything yourself. And then again, when you're taking it off, don't touch the front of the mask. Take it off, put it in the laundry. I get a lot of questions about gaiters. There's a gator, a lot of people have these. They can be effective, but here's the problem. A lot of people continuously adjust them. So be careful if you use one of these. Most of all, stay home as much as possible. Go out only if you have to, and wear a mask if you're gonna be in a place where you can't socially distance. Stay safe, everybody. Amid the coronavirus, there is creativity. Wearing a mask, Hong Kong artist Tika from East shows me the art he's created on his iPad. It shows a Hong Kong worker in a surgical mask fighting a demon virus like a superhero. From the beginning, Hong Kong and many other Asian governments have recommended the wearing of masks in public, whether they are showing symptoms or not. In early March, Hong Kong had only 150 cases of the virus, despite being one of the first places to report confirmed infections outside mainland China. The city has only seen a spike after people returned from Europe and the U.S. Here in Hong Kong, wearing a mask has been a fact of life since January. Now, with clean hands, I put on my mask like this, making sure that this is under my chin and the wire is bent over the bridge of my nose. And I wear this every time I go to a crowded place like a park or a supermarket. It not only brings down the, uh, you know, the cases of coronaviruses, it also brings down the influenza. In fact, this is now the influenza season and we hardly see any influenza cases. And that is because the masks actually protect not only against the coronaviruses, but also against the influenza viruses as well. To control the pandemic, Hong Kong has isolated cases, quarantined their contacts, and encouraged social distancing. But while Hong Kong continues to encourage mask use, U.S. officials largely have not. In late February, the U.S. Surgeon General tweeted, in all caps, stop buying masks. They are not effective in preventing general public from catching coronavirus, but if healthcare providers can't get them to care for sick patients, it puts them and our communities at risk. But there is growing evidence that masks are effective. According to a study of interventions used during the 2003 SARS outbreak, consistently wearing a mask in public was associated with a 70% reduction in the risk of catching SARS. A recent study in The Lancet rounded up the contrasting advice from governments on the wearing of masks. The authors endorsed it under certain circumstances. The top priority is to make sure we got enough masks for healthcare workers because they really need it and we have to make sure there's enough for them. We know that wearing a mask is better than not wearing a mask, but at the same time, of course, staying at home is the best way to avoid infection. Cowling says a mask can help protect healthy wearers from breathing in infectious particles or touching their face with contaminated hands. But the greatest protection comes from covering the mouths of silent carriers, people already infected but don't know it yet. And that's a very good justification for using masks particularly for COVID-19, where we do know that on some occasions, people can spread infection before their symptoms appear. Through public information campaigns, people in Hong Kong are taught how to properly wear a mask, and virtually everyone does. 
It is a powerful symbol of solidarity as individuals protect each other to help end this pandemic. The U.S. is about four and a quarter percent of the of the world population, mm -hmm. uh, the, what we have. And yet we have disproportionately high percentages when it comes to coronavirus cases and coronavirus deaths. Why? I mean, I, I, I get that people are skeptical of some of the numbers we're hearing from uh, China or Iran or Russia, and maybe there's a lot more going on there that we don't know about. But still, we have more coronavirus here than, than other countries. Well, you know, I, I think that we acted late. Jake, I mean, you know, and this is, uh, there's going to be a plenty of time to sort of do the retrospective on this, but I think we did not test adequately. And as a result, in communities all across the country, Jake, when we were hearing, you know, maybe there's 50 or 60 cases in the country, for that period of time, the virus was circulating robustly in these communities, and many people were getting infected. Problem is, it takes three weeks between the time of exposure and the time that someone might die from this. Uh, so, you know, we're now still seeing the ramifications of that, Jake, just because, you know, the per capita really does matter here because we are doing a lot of tests here, but they're not uniformly distributed, and the bulk of this testing has come about recently. You know, we, we talk about the number of total tests, whatever, close to 2 million, I believe, now. It changes every day. But that was, bulk of that just happened over the last couple of weeks. You wanted that to have happened early and uniformly, and we didn't have that.